Not all integrals require a uh, U substitution. If you have something simple like this, it does not require a substitution. Um, when I confront students with this, and I ask them to make a guess as to what it could possibly be, uh, some students freeze up and other students just uh, guess at the correct answer, which happens to be sine of x minus pi uh, plus c. And why is that the correct answer? Why is it not uh, more complicated than that? Reason being, when you differentiate this, uh, as the c drops out, you do get cosine of x minus pi. That's because when you do the chain rule here, uh, the derivative of the inside function is just 1. So it's not going to affect what the answer turns out being. You see, this is really similar to just anti-differentiating cosine x, which goes to just sine x. So if the argument x is replaced with x plus or minus something when you go to do the integral, uh, you really don't have to worry about it, and you can pretend that it's not even there. For example, this thing here, right, x plus 5 cubed. If you were integrating x cubed, you would have no trouble saying, okay, well, that's 1 fourth x to the fourth. Well, the same thing applies here. This is not a whole lot different. It's just x plus 5. So the answer to this will just be 1 fourth x plus 5 uh, to the fourth plus c. And you can check it with anti-differentiation, and really that's the end of it. All that you have to do is realize that it's not much different from x cubed by itself. Next one over here. Uh, what could this be? It looks intimidating. Well, this isn't a whole lot different from the integral of 3 over x dx, whose uh, antiderivative is 3 ln absolute x. So, well, this is just this is just going to be the same thing. It's just going to be 3 ln of absolute, not x, but x minus 1. Let's see. Because it's, just a, it's j just a slight change from this to get here. If the change is simple enough, you can just carry out the integration, you really don't have to worry about it. Uh, so then, okay, what could this be here? Well, the antiderivative of secant squared is tan, so you, you might guess that the answer would be uh, tan of 5 theta plus a constant. But when you differentiate this, uh, you will get secant squared 5 theta, but it'll produce an extra factor of 5 out here. Right? That's because of the 5 on the inside. So. This is similar to secant squared theta, but not so similar that it's not going to change it. All right? The difference is, instead of adding or subtracting from the variable of integration, you're multiplying by something. And when you differentiate that, it's going to produce an extra factor of whatever that number is out front. So you just have to kind of see past that, and then you offset it. All right? Because if it's 5 theta, you're going, to, it, you're going to carry it out the same way, but divide by that factor of 5 before you finish it off. Uh, so this thing here would be the next example. You look at this and say, okay, this is awfully similar to the integral of x to the 7 dx, which is going to be 1 at, uh, 1 eighth x to the 8th. Okay, so, but you notice that it's 3x instead of just x. So what you do is you go for the base answer. It's going to be 3x plus 1 to the 8th over 8. But because of the factor of 3 in there, when you go to do the chain rule for differentiating this, it's going to produce an extra 3. So you have to undo that by putting a third out in front of there. And the final answer will be 1 24th, 3x plus 1 to the 8th plus c. You can check that when you bring down the 8 and pull out the 3 with the chain rule. That's going to go away, and you'll just have the original thing that you started with. Nice example is. Just like this thing here, okay? Anti this is awfully similar to e to the x. So the antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the 1 minus 5x is going to be what it is, 5x. Although, uh, since x is being multiplied by minus 5, you have to compensate for that by putting a minus 1 fifth out front of c. And you can check it with anti-differentiation. In general, uh, the rule can be generalized by, if you know what the, what the antiderivative of f is, if you know that this is equal to big F, and if you have to anti-differentiate little f only operated on not x, but ax plus b, the final answer is going to be 1 over a times big F of ax plus b plus a constant. You just operate the antiderivative with the original argument in there, and you just have to divide by the factor of A.